Hello, hello everybody at Wikimania. Uh, welcome to this session about decolonizing structured data. I am Mariana, I am with Sim, Kelly and Erika and let me share my screen. Oh, uh, full screen. So, welcome to the, this conversation. This is an invitation from Who's Knowledge, Wikimovement Brazil and Wikimedia Deutschland uh, for joining a conversation that started last year. Uh, I am Mariana Fossati, the Who's Knowledge Decolonizing Wikimedia Program Coordinator. I am with Erika Asselini, Community Manager at Wikimovimento Brazil. Uh, Sin Pietersman, from, uh, she's the Project Management of Knowledge Justice at Wikimedia Deutschland. And Kelly Foster, my colleague at Who's Knowledge, the Program Coordinator for Who's Digital Archives. So, this conversation just started, it started uh, on October 2021 when over 40 participants from around the world started uh, this conversation about decolonizing the internet structured data uh, as part of a broader conversation about decolonizing the internet. Uh, these 40 participants um, uh, were mostly female identifier in or from the global south. They were mostly indigenous black uh, people of colors in origin. And um, uh, these 40 participants had together at Wikidata, uh, at, at a pre conference of the Wikidata Conf. Um, that last year was uh, held uh, in Brazil by Wikimovimento Brazil. And uh, this pre conference were organized um, uh, between Who's Knowledge, uh, Wikimedia Deutschland, and Wikimovimento Brazil. Uh, but for starting or restarting this conversation with you at Wikimedia, um, it's important to just talk a bit about what does a structured data mean, especially for newcomers, uh, because this Wikimania is especially focused, focused on welcome newcomers. Uh, so let me just say that uh, without mm, uh, not too much technical details, that structured data are pieces of information that can be easily read, understood, and processed not only by humans, but uh, by machines, especially by machines. Uh, humans uh, give the, the uh, dictionaries, the vocabularies, the ontologies to, to, the, to, to machines for understand us, understand the uh, the meaning of the objects, events, places, people, relationships uh, that are part of a structured data system. And these systems are used in countless uh, apps, tools, platforms on the internet that are built upon such as structured data systems uh, from Google to Gidata. Uh, for instance, let's think on um, the info boxes that you can see when you do a, a search on Google, for instance, the, the Google Knowledge Graph or the Google Knowledge Panel uh, is made uh, using uh, data from different sources, structured in a certain way, and it's ready for answer your questions when you search online. Uh, uh, and, uh, Norm and Wikidata and Wikipedia are important parts of this kind of um, uh, knowledge panels that you can see when you search on Google, but also there are other um, uh, ways of using structured data. Uh, for instance, and just yesterday in, uh, in Wikimania, we heard about 
eh, wiki, eh, Quichua, um, a, wiki, a, a, a database based in, in Wikibase that uh, can be used, for instance, for creating a chatbot in Quichua, in Quichua language for Quichuan speakers. Uh, so there are a lot of different uh, ways uh, in which we, uh, structured data can be used and a way in which you can see structured data on Wikimedia projects is structured data on commons. Uh, this is something that uh, I, I don't know if any everybody knows about uh, this project, maybe the newcomers don't, but this is about the media files uh, that South, the, 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 the millions of, of media files we have stored in Wikimedia Commons uh, can be connected with concepts, with uh, their uh, representations as data on Wikidata in a multilingual way. Um, this is possible because every item, every entity, every object uh, that you can find on uh, Wikidata, which is a huge database, um, is identified by a code, this uh, number, this um, Q followed by, by a number, uh, that identify this unique entity, this unique object like a book or a light bulb or, or a computer or even a feminist strike. <laughs> any event that is um, uh, that you can find on Wikidata, uh, but also in a multilingual way, uh, because every um, entity on Wikidata uh, is available in, in many different languages. And this is a collaborative database. Commons is a collaboratively uh, media uh, project. And both together make uh, easy for people, for instance, to uh, search um, uh, images in different languages, and uh, and to let uh, the search and shine on Wikimedia Commons um, uh, find images in a more contextualized way, um, because the images are related with, with, that, with data in different languages. This is a, a, a way in which you can experiment directly structured data. And you also you can contribute uh, adding uh, descriptions, linking uh, the images with the data using uh, Wikimedia Commons. But beyond the technical, uh, this session is about the political uh, and the, pol the, the um, uh, policy of the epistemology um, uh, in the technique in these technical developments. So, why uh, does structured data need knowledge justice? That that's our question today. Uh, for different reasons, uh, at least these uh, four important reasons. A structured data is at the core of how the internet works nowadays, currently. As I said before, uh, you can find a structured data in uh, searching online, uh, doing you, you, when you do uh, questions uh, to a, um, a voice assistant or when you look for a translation. Um, uh, uh, you can find uh, structured data everywhere, especially uh, because artificial intelligence is deeply based in these uh, data sets that are structured in a specific ways. But these systems are far for neutrality because, and this is something that uh, we bring all the time to the conversation in whose knowledge is that the knowledge that you can find online in which the structured data systems are based that feed these systems are not uh, mainly creating created uh, for and by uh, women people of colors LGBTQIA plus folks, indigenous communities, and uh, peoples 
uh, in and from the global south. Uh, at the contrary, we are the ones that are more impacted by how structured data is used or even abused. So there is an urgent need for centering those who are often marginalized in the build, in the develop, in the process, in the uh, in the uses and abuses of uh, structured data online. Uh, for having this deeply political conversation, uh, we uh, at the pre-conference, at uh, the wiki uh, data pre-conference, uh, uh, we set the conversation based on guiding, guiding principles uh, that uh, are love, respect and solidarity because we wanted participants to be aware of their positionalities and privileges and to be able to be their full multiple self during the whole session. Uh, so that's why we uh, grounded the session in these principles of love, respect and solidarity. And also we, uh, we, we, have a, we had a commitment on the, for the privacy and safety and well-being of the participants. And, and also with language justice, uh, this session were, were held, uh, were, were, uh, had an um, uh, interpretation, a simultaneous interpretation uh, between Spanish, Portuguese and English. Um, because uh, the pre the, the pre-conference was very focused in Latin America because the Wikiconf was uh, held in Latin America uh, last year, but also because at least uh, if we can just bring a bit of language justice, uh, this is this is so basic because uh, language is a proxy of knowledge especially online, so that's why we uh, were paying attention especially to that. So with those principles in mind uh, and in practice, uh, what did we do and how did we do it in, the, in that session? Uh, we organized the session in three, um, in three parts, a panel called Perspectives and Provocations, with the words of a special guest uh, that uh, shared their provocations, their deep provocations with us. Um, uh, then um, a small uh, group session with, uh, with all the participants, split in, in smaller groups, called imaginations and implementations. Uh, and finally, a plenary uh, called Listening and Learning, uh, in which listeners uh, from each group uh, reported back to the plenary. That's, uh, that was the, the, the organization of, this, uh, of, the, of the whole session. The provocations uh, of, the, of the panelists uh, were um, um, about some specific questions. Uh, what does structured da data mean and why it is important that we talk about it? What does it mean to have multiple knowledge frames, multiple epistemic frames or epistemology, epistemologies at the heart of structured data? How can we reimagine structured data, especially from a feminist and anti-colonial lens? What is one thing you would like to see done differently in the structured data today that will help us come to that space of emancipation and liberation? And uh, um, I want to invite you to keep these provocations in mind and share about this in the chat, especially by the end of the, of the session today, especially the last uh, question. Uh, but after the, this provocation and the, the small group's work, is a key insights emerged from, from the conversation. And let me share a bit about this. 
uh, these uh, topics. One of the topics was access and control of data. Who control the data? Who control the um, the uh, who control and who govern uh, and who is excluded of data governance online? Um, we identified here the need of uh, granted fully access to knowledge and tools, especially to though the, the majority of the world who is marginalized from data governance uh, to uh, being able to uh, participate in governance, to, to create, uh, to develop structured data system, uh, to use it, reuse it, process uh, data. Um, uh, but also, and this is very important, we identify it here, uh, uh, a, a, a conflict uh, between uh, some act the, the actors that use structured data in commercial ways with uh, um, and for profits versus some human rights issues uh, that can be in conflicts with that uh, such a, a profitable use of structured data online. Another topic was agency and engagement, and here uh, people. Um, uh, talking about the importance of um, that there are no excuses uh, for people to engage um, with the structured data, uh, bringing di the diversity of context and epistemologies that exist. And uh, if, we if we create res knowledge resources and a full ecosystem uh, the, uh, based in, the, in this di di diversity, there is no excuse to not engage. Um, but also, it's important here to acknowledge that uh, some uh, specific knowledge, uh, especially in indigenous community, uh, communities, uh, um, maybe uh, shouldn't be on online if the community uh, don't give the consensus uh, for that. And there is a right to refuse datification uh, for, especially for uh, indigenous communities. Another topic was distributed data uh, as, a, uh, as a, in certain way, smarter solution uh, in comparison, in opposition to big data. Uh, maybe smaller and connected data sets governed by marginalized communities are a much, much better solution than a um, big centralized database. Um, and this, uh, this is related with another topic, uh, planet-centered planet redesign of structured data, uh, keeping in mind uh, the environmental impacts of data infrastructure uh, and questioning the purpose of every new develop, every new that data set, every new engine, every new um, artificial intelligence uh, application, uh, keeping in mind, doing a, an asset, assessment of these environmental impacts, um, especially uh, the impacts of big data. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, the importance of the plurality of data and to create models based on different knowledges and the glorious complexities mm -hmm. of our communities. Uh, the importance to go beyond text because not all knowledges um, uh, can be encoded by text, images, sounds, signs, or other ways. Um, and uh, also the importance of the local specificities and the critical need of listening because uh, decolonizing structured data, decolonizing the internet is a process. Decolonization is a process uh, which needs uh, time and efforts, uh, intentional time and uh, intentional efforts. So listening is critical here. So before I uh, talk about what is next, 
I want to invite my colleagues uh, to uh, share some talks uh, after this uh, this brief presentations. Uh, I will stop sharing. And I, I want to invite um, Erika, Sin, and Kelly. Maybe Erika, can you go first? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Thank you very much for the invitation for this conversation. For me, it's a very special moment because it's been almost a year now since we did this event last year. And well, I think I can start from the beginning, right? So we were organizing Wikidata.com in partnership with Media Deutschland. And we thought that this shouldn't be a conference just for people who are already in the Wikidata universe and heavily focus in their contributions in there. So we wanted to take the opportunity to bring more people to the conversation. And we also didn't want this to be a technical conference as well. We wanted to focus on the social side of Wikidata because Wikidata is constantly growing, is scaling up as some say. And still there are a lot of people who are not in there. So this implies in how structured data on Wikidata is being organized at this moment and who are not there so which knowledge are not there so this conversation we had was very important not only because of the content itself but i think of the methodology that we use for the event so the way that we selected people to attend the session and the way that they were invited to provide their thoughts as well is very important for not only the engagement but for the way that they feel that their ideas and perceptions are received and welcomed and valued at the same time, you know, because this is not uh, something very um, intuitive in other spaces, you know. So the way that we organize this sort of conversation may be as important as the outcomes of the conversations as well, because it helps us to build stronger connections in people, in communities, been marginalized from such processes. So this is my perspective on everything that we did. I feel that more than the outcomes, because we'll see in the long run, not on the short run, of course, but how we make this done is very important as well. And I'm really proud to be part of this. And thank you so much for being here. I'm really curious to see uh, what my colleagues here think about what happens uh, in the near future as well. And thank you so much. Thank you, Erika. Thank you so much. And uh, I will pass the word to uh, Sin. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Oh, sorry, Sin. I can't hear you now. Don't know why. Again, um, no, now I can. I yes. can hear. <laughs> it's audio, <laughs> the bane of humankind for forever. Um, but yeah, I uh, joined uh, Wikimedia Germany actually like two months ago, so I wasn't present for uh, your um, uh, conference last year. But I like uh, still witnessed it as a person out of outside, outside of Wikimedia. So I'm super happy to be here, and I'm. I'm uh, kind of honored to like, uh, yeah, working on knowledge uh, equity with uh, you and other communities. And uh, myself, I have a background also like in, in, in tech and uh, uh, intersectional educational approaches to it. Um, and I would totally agree that we also have like to get to the point that more people just like learn and know that tech and, and structured data is not neutral and not objectives, but it's like uh, created and formed by people uh, and their beliefs and perspectives. And as of now, like a very specific uh, kind and, and group of people. So we definitely have to change that and also let people know about it because most people just yeah don't know. They think like it's a physical science, but tech and data is not like it's just so influenced by people. 
Um, and so I think this would be a first step, uh, definitely. And also a lot of people still have to learn. And yeah, like uh, we are building our team up in Wikimedia Germany. That's like why I joined, joined two months ago and other colleagues as well. Um, because uh, Wikimedia Germany, uh, it, yeah, in the Wikimedia uh, universe has a lot of researchers uh, to share. And that's what we're here for. Like we want to get in, engaged with marginalized communities, uh, get their perspectives, and of course, uh, share our resources and support them in their work. So thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, solo hablo un poco español. Uh, pero puedo decir muchas gracias a todas uh, para vuestro trabajo. I hope this was right. So thank you so much for your work. Muchas gracias, Sin. Eh, muy, muy bello escuchar tus palabras en español también. Thank you. <laughs> and Kelly, please eh, go ahead and share some thoughts with us. Thank you very much, Mariana, and hello to the other panelists. Uh, my name is Kelly Foster, and I attended um, both the um, workshops that were done to produce the uh, Decolonizing the Internet Structured Data Report, and I was part of the programming team for Wikidatacon uh, last year as well. Uh, um, um, so a couple of reflections, really, uh, or to emphasize some of the points that Mariana um, brought up in the presentation. And one of the key themes that I remember from the workshop was around um, the right to refuse datafication and the right to opacity, as it's called by a, um, a Martinican uh, philosopher, Edouard Glisson, the, the right not to be understood. And definitely in the sessions that I was in, that was a strong theme. How can we, um, uh, the, the big we, the global we, humanity we, how can we ensure that uh, we respect people's rights not to be understood and right to refuse datification, as the report uh, put it? Um, the other thing, um, reflecting on the conference um, uh, last October, uh, in discussing decolonizing the internet um, or decolonizing uh, structured data, one of the things that's less um, able to be communicated by a report or even by the, um, by the recordings of some of the sessions was the very palpable pain that came along with a lot of the discussions that were being had, especially the discussions around um, uh, data modeling and taxonomies that reflect and reinscribe colonial violence. Um, I think it's something that, uh, partly because a lot of the structured data that we are importing into Wikimedia projects, especially on um, uh, uh, commons as well as Wikidata, is using uh, data sets um, uh, from colonial institutions, namely museums and other types of institutions that have been established to categorize people and cultures. And often that categorization comes with the colonial violence of alienation and, and disenfranchisement. Um, so uh, being, as I said, that is something that um, is perhaps that pain that comes along with um, confronting those realities of the data sets as we come across them is something that is perhaps more difficult to communicate um, through the reports and um, other documentation of the events. Um, and then finally, um, always as I'm thinking through these things, uh, Mariana's presentation uh, concluded with emphasizing the need for uh, plurality and plurality and, and uh, creativity really in how we think about the data sets that we work with um, uh, on Wikidata and on Commons. And when I think and speak about plurality, I'm thinking not only about uh, the language that we use, not only about the semantics of the uh, machine readable data, um, but also about the um, the kind of ontological structures that underline and that undergird the databases as well. Um, currently, in my opinion, uh, Wikidata um, it has uh, 
is imposing the ontological structure of a Western encyclopedia. Uh, but there is a potential for more plurality, more multivocality um, on a database like Wikidata. Uh, but perhaps we there is a scope to do some more experimentation in thinking about how linked data can um, uh, provide or work towards having these uh, multiple or pluralistic views of the world and of being in the world. Um, there was a really interesting uh, conversation as well in the Wikidatacon conference ab about the, the potentials of using uh, decolonial English as a as an alternative language option. Um, and again, again, because so much of that taxonomical um, uh, classifications and language are um, language violence understanding that has been inscribed and imposed um, by uh, colonial violence. So these are just some uh, um, potentials or perhaps unfulfilled potential um, that is ahead of us as we're thinking about ways in which to um, bring in more ethical considerations into structured data in the Wikimedia projects. Thank you, Kelly. And I think that maybe this connect with a question we we have in the chat about uh, by Jan about uh, which data are you talking about access and control of? If we are talking about Wikidata, uh, we are talking in in general. Wikidata is a reference, of course. Here um, is uh, one of the of the projects. Uh, that we are, we are thinking when we talk about structured data, but there are other projects too, and even interconnected with with Wikidata, uh, for instance, through and, and even Wikibase is another project. We can also do the same question. Um, uh, I, I just remember the, the the chat yesterday by Elwin Waman about. Um, uh, which have um, um, the using of uh, Wikibase for for Kichwa uh, for uh, Kichwa base, and uh, and and th those are uh, this is a small project, but is connected with another big project. So we are we are talking about different projects that can be interconnected, uh, and when when we talk about access and control, we are. Uh, talking about different configurations, for instance, uh, Wikidata is a, a crowdsourced database controlled by the community um, with the, almost the same rules we know uh, and we practice on, on the Wiki, uh, um, uh, Wikimedia communities. And this is a uh, but even when this is a uh, community organized and, and community led, uh, anyway, uh, stru structures of uh, power and privileges that are um, that are previous uh, of of the uh, creation and the management of the databases itself are influencing the process. So when we talk about access and control. We are talking about access to um, tools for using uh, this database, knowledge uh, on how to use it, knowledge on how to um, uh, create new things based on this on this data and these tools. So control and access are um, um, the meaning of, of control and access is broader and is is and it is beyond the the, the, the data infrastructure itself and is rooted in uh, strict social structures of power and privileges that influence the whole process. Um, that's more or less the, the our the, the our understanding of of this issue. And I see other questions. Um, could you share your thoughts on what we as individual Wikimedians, affiliates and content uploaders could do to work on this important issue? Uh, thanks, Michelle. And this is a question for, for you and for everybody in this session, for um, uh, people that is listened uh, and uh, so please 
this is our question for you and uh, we would love to see your your suggestions your thoughts your ideas in the chat or in the other part and another question uh, by Jan, uh, what can should Wikidata editors uh, that don't do uh, mass imports but shows regular editing do different better when they get back to editing after Wikimania? That's another super important question. Uh, and uh, and we, we really would love to, to hear from you, from your perspectives. Uh, and this is an invitation also to create more spaces and more opportunities for continue the conversation. And let me share my screen. Uh, one. The question is, what is next? Because we started the conversation in October, October last year, and of course, uh, the, this, these questions and these problems exist before this conf the, the conference and the session uh, of October. Uh, so, uh, one of the main conclusions was that we need more, we need to create and convene more opportunities to radically reimagine and redesign the internet structured data through a feminist, anti-colonial and anti-racist lens. And for that, we need more. So that's a question for you uh, uh, in, the, in the Wikimedia community, for, for us, for everybody. What can, what can uh, we do as Wikimedians? What would you like to see happen next? to move from um, conversation to action and how would you like to contribute um, in, in different ways. So please, if you have talk, if you have links, if you have resources, um, if you know more conferences, um, spaces in which we can uh, continue the conversation and go deeper in the conversation, please share because this is uh, something that it remains open for, for us and, and for everybody in this, in this conversation. Uh, so we are looking for ways to imagine radical possibilities, to stay connected around these topics, to um, uh, uh, make concrete steps towards emancipatory, emancipatory practices in the structured data, and to join more collective spaces uh, and to connect uh, even small or, or individual projects to, uh, to other projects uh, and to create a space for, for this conversation and a space for practice and as Kelly said, for experimentation too. Uh, so if uh, you wish to read more, to learn more, you can download the, the report of the, uh, of the session in, in whose knowledge webpage, Decolonizing the Internet Structured Data Summary Report, is available in, uh, in English, in Spanish and in Portuguese so far. Uh, and you can see there as the faces of the, uh, the diverse participants that um, joined the, that first, that uh, um, open conversation. So let me see if there are more comments on or questions. And to my colleagues, <coughs> The questions or comments, please feel free. Uh, Erika, Sin, Kelly, I am just uh, looking to the chat. Uh, Mariana, I think mm -hmm. Ian had a question earlier on, and if there's time to at least address, address it. And also to say, I will be in, and hopefully some of the other panelists will join me in the networking session for um 10 minutes or so after this session uh so you can join us or join me and hopefully some of the panelists will also be there um 
uh, to talk a bit more. So Ian was asking, can you say a little bit more about decolonial English? And arguably this could be decolonial any um, language. Um, and uh, so this is the issue that, for example, um, the way that uh, the kind of taxonomies, the, the taxonomic language around nationhood and citizenship uh, works on uh, Wikidata, both the language and the um, data modeling, as far as I can tell, um, resists the complicated ways in which nationality, citizenship, tribal citizenship um, can be expressed or even ethnicity can be expressed as well. Um, so some examples for that is in a, um, you know, is it, are we calling North America Turtle Island or are we calling it America? Are we calling the people of the uh, Navajo Nation Navajo or uh, it, does Wikidata um, identify that they call themselves Diné? Are we are we labeling someone as a as an object, as a slave, or are we recognizing that they're in a, a enslaved status that is their, their uh, social and legal status? So these are, are just some examples um, and I'm sure there are many others. And um, how do we um, how do we model that in the data? But also then how does how do the ways that the language is modeled on Wikidata reflect that there are these differences between this kind of conventional but colonial way of um, uh, classifying and ordering people, and how people themselves uh, identify in the language that they use? Uh, so hopefully that's giving you a bit more of an insight into. Um, the conversations that were being had around decolonial English, but it could be decolonial any language for that matter. Thank you, Kelly. Um, hmm. And oh, there is a, a, another question, or uh, maybe you addressed this, Kelly. Can you share some specific example of the data structures? we should try to change. Uh, I don't know if any of you want to uh, add more about this, about more examples. But um, I think that it is about to recognize, to acknowledge that uh, there are not only different sources of knowledge, and not only it's about to uh, think on different communities as a sources of knowledge to complete the lacks of knowledge or, or the biases we have, but this uh, conversation is also about the, the, the ontologies, the, uh, and this is informational science, but this is only the, the philosophy, the, the philosophical systems that in which different um, uh, uh, um, data sets are based on and um, and for instance and, 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 and it is also about the relationship between the different um, entities let's say people places objects uh, and so on and in different uh, uh, territories in a, in, for, for different people, for different communities, there are, exist different um, ontologies. And I think that um, we need to deconstruct the idea that there is one big or uh, ontology with a higher hierarchy that can dominate every ontology. And on the contrary, isn't uh, how uh, those different ontologies can talk uh, and can interact in a transformative way. Not only coexist as separate things, but also it's about um, if we can uh, create this space for 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 a for a conversation about there is no one, no only dominated ontology. Uh, we can move forward to a trans to 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 a transformation, to a transformative way of, of doing structured data with a lot of potential also for knowledge justice and, and for justice, justice uh, itself. So I think that we don't have more time. 
And so thank you everybody. And I, I hope we can continue uh, the conversation uh, in many match opportunities. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone. Bye.